Hey everyone, Psycho Derek here. Uh, hitting you back up with a fairly different kind of video. Uh, it's probably probably going to be a long one, hopefully not two parts. And I'm recording this on Sunday evening, but I'll try to sneak it in perhaps Sunday afternoon or late in the evening. We'll see. But I just decided to come back and share sort of my own theme I came up with. Um, you know, since a lot of us are staying indoors, I thought. You know, good opportunity to kind of just bring a, another video out for, you know, whoever's entertained by my channel. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I came up with this theme. Um, it all started with me on Discogs. I created this own list of mine where I think it's titled Top 5, not Top 5, Top All-Time Favorite 5-Star Psych Albums. And they're just my top, top all-time favorite five-star psych records that I have in my collection um, not anything that I don't have so I kind of wanted to own all these so I could show them on camera and you know in my mind there's really not like a perfect album for, that's for sure and uh, if, if you guys use rate your music at all I've been on there for at least 10 years and over those 10 years I've rated probably only if anything, maybe up to close to a little over 100 five-star ratings on there out of like 4,000 things I've rated. So kind of gives you a, a good sense of like, you know, I it's pretty, it's got to be pretty high up there if I give it a five-star rating and uh, it's got to be some, it's got to be like a life changer or it's got to be something really essential to me. Uh, perhaps, you know, kind of evolved my music taste over the years it made an impact on me or it's something I can come back and listen to all the time so lots of different reasons but we're gonna dive into that um, as I talk about them and if you guys want to uh, I'll try to leave a link in the description so you guys can check out you know my brief reviews on uh, these particular albums that I put on my discogs list and I'll put the, the link in the description so um, and all of these are kind of in order um, I tried to make them in order best I could, but the fact that they're all five-star albums for me, it really doesn't matter how I rank them necessarily, but um, these first few at least, these first maybe five or six, are some of the biggest, biggest life changers for me. And uh, to this day, never get bored of them, can listen to them anytime, and uh, just really impacted me into the whole uh, genre of psychedelia. So uh, this is like my top 30, roughly, of albums that I own. I consider personally five-star records, you know, albums that are just incredible uh, in the collection. So here we go. Uh, we got to start off with a bang here. This is like, I've always considered this, you know, my all-time favorite album. And it's a uh, it's pretty close contender, I would say. I mean, nothing's surpassed it as far as UK pop psych. And, uh, you know, just speaks for itself, you know, Kaleidoscope, Tangerine Dream. This is a reissue on five hours back. So with all these albums, I'm going to kind of briefly tell you why, but uh, such ca catchy songwriting, um, just a perfect sense of what the UK was like in the, in the Summer of Love, you know, 67. Uh, all the way from the front image to the sounds that you hear, it's just um, Desert Island Disc. It's something I could always listen to, and uh, it's one of my favorite UK groups. Um, and then I've always considered this as, as far as like the term psychedelic rock on its own, this is the one I've always put to the top and has never, nothing has ever surpassed this album for me. This is uh, Churchill's. So if you guys remember, um, Years back, you know, probably the second video I ever made uh, in the VC, I was sharing my, at the time, psychedelic collection, which was pretty, pretty lame at the time, but you could see how young I was, and I, this is one of those albums I showed, so I had this pretty early on, and um, I discovered this, you know, kind of as I was graduating high school, when I was kind of getting to, into this uh, deeper stuff, stuff that was kind of considered uh, classics, you know, and the fact they recorded this in Israel and they have kind of that Eastern influence with it, 
the production is just mesmerizing when you listen to it and uh, just nothing like it um, if I hear one track on this album I have to like hear the whole thing I just can't stop and it's it's that great uh, as far as my favorite uh, private press vanity kind of record sort of your do-it-yourself this one's way at the top for me I've always talked about this one Justin O'Brien Jake time will tell North Dakota masterpiece for sure and uh, you know even though this came out in 78 this has got some homemade cosmic sounds uh, you know kind of loungy psychedelic stuff and this is one you could just always put on and I'll just be taken away every time it's uh, very much a desert, desert island disc uh, this one I, I don't talk about as much anymore but or rarely show this but Maybe it'll surprise some of you guys, but as far as Neo Psych, this is one that's really uh, kind of impacted me the most. And I've always ranked it up there. I don't listen to it as much as I used to, but this is Person Pitch by uh, Panda Bear. And this is quite a widely recognized, uh, you know, Neo Psych record. And the best way to describe this is that it sounds like Pet Sounds on Acid times 10. <laughs> you know, that's always what comes to mind when I... Uh, Think of this album very beach boys influenced and it's uh quite the trip uh dreamy kind of free form in a way and it's just beautiful a lot of it is and most of it's all samples um as far as like you know when we're talking about electronics and psych you know this one's at the top of the heap for sure 50 foot hose cauldron uh, this one's a life changer for me uh, this is one that I consider, you know, top of the heap as far as we're talking U.S. psychedelia. This is a game changer right here. Just just as much as uh, United States of America or spoils of war in that sort of league. So, very cool. And this one I've always considered my favorite uh, U.S. pop psych album. Nothing's really uh, past this one for me. This is Bittersweet, Hypnotic One. I could use an upgrade copy of this uh, down the road, um, for sure. It was kind of a starter copy for me, and I kind of paid up for it because I was really wanting it at the time. And they're kind of getting scarce now, but man, this has the works on it. Um, if you're looking for some psych effects in between just catchy pop hooks, uh, with a mixture of things, it's it's not really rock oriented. So uh, this is just this is the stuff I live for major label uh, psych pop and then as far as you know probably my top one of the top favorite uh, US psych rock bands uh, when they start out garage but this is their uh, masterpiece in my mind underground on the reprise label it's a clean copy I have the record uh, elsewhere but this is just the cover but, uh, very clean copy uh, essential when we're talking about psychedelia for sure it was a game changer for me and then as far as um me getting into like you know starting to recognize what psychedelia was all about you know some of the underground stuff i was starting to think you know it's kind of quirky it's kind of odd it's kind of weird this is the album this is the first true album where i was thinking where man this is really out there there's, there's a lot of the stuff like this and yeah psychedelia is kind of a Strained rabbit hole, and it all started with this one for me. This is Alice Cooper's debut, Pretty for, Pretties for You. And uh, this is one of the first kind of more rare records that I purchased um, when I graduated high school. And I actually, in high school, I uh, painted this uh, on a canvas once. And uh, I have it back in my uh, parents' house, you know, where all my stuff's at. But anyways, this is... Uh, this is such a classic album. Uh, it's very Beatles heavy and kind of influenced by early Floyd. And just, to, you know, since they were working with Zappa, you can hear the influences there. Uh, this is just the one that changed my perspective on psychedelia. So I just, it's a game changer for me. Now this one kind of fits more along uh, garage rock, you could say, but it's debatable. I mean, it does have some psychedelic undertones. But I still put it in the list. This is the life-changing band for me, The Stooges. 
to put their debut in the in the mix. Um, you know, it came out in '69. It got that nice wah wah guitar. You got tracks like "We Will Fall," which takes up like half the disc there. You know, so it's I, w I put it in the list. You know, it, it's not primarily psychedelic, but it's got those leanings for sure. And uh, their first two albums were just all I listened to when I was in school. They were, uh, and you know, to this day, they still kick ass when I listen to them. Uh, another, just like the Electric Prunes, this one is just at the top for me. And they were just so much more than a one-hit wonder band. Strawberry Alarm Clock. Um, I, I just went ahead and went with their uh, debut, but all four of their records are uh, quite essential. But, um, you know, some, sometimes I think this kind of gets slept on, you know, just because they're hit. But, man, they do... Uh, they do get deep and pretty tripped out on some tracks. Uh, Rainy Day Mar Mushroom Pillow. Um, the World's on Fire. It's just all good. And then, um, you know, some sometimes people might think, you know, this is kind of hyped just because of the cover, but I disagree. I think this does deserve to be up in the, you know, it deserves a top place in, as far as... Uh, you, U.S. Psychedelia, Gandalf, and um, I don't know what else to say, I mean those vocal delays, some great uh, kind of early progressive movements I would say, and uh, it's just memorable tracks, and the fact they're all cover songs nearly, you know, makes it kind of special. Um, and here's, here's, here's an essential one, Trevor the Clever, right? <laughs> uh, Psychedelic Soul, The Freak Scene. Um, just what a cover that is. So as far as when we're talking about um, exploitation site sort of stuff, even though they were kind of a real band, um, I'd almost put the deep above this one, but this one uh, gets even... Um, it kind of recognizes the era a little better with this one compared to the deep, which was, you know, sort of the early, pro you know, preceding the whole movement. But um, this is... Still quite a trip when you listen to it. Um, some Eastern influences, again, kind of a Raga inspired. And, you know, at the top of the heap when it comes to uh, that U.S. psychedelia, again. I know I keep saying the same terms, but that's what's coming to mind as I'm flying through these. Um, as far as, like, very low-quality pressed kind of record, um, this is very special to me. So one that kind of even brought me further into, uh, you know, sort of the private press world. And this is complex. To me, this is just perfect uh, UK site. Uh, definitely better than uh, Forever Amber, I would say. Um, they do mix pop and rock. And even though the, the production's not the best, you know, their songwriting shines through. And it's just um, incredible work. Images Blue is just a Desert Island song for me. I could listen to that on repeat all day. <laughs> um, then I had to pick, you know, an album from this group. As far as a group from the Netherlands, I tried to, uh, you know, get different groups from different origins. And this band always uh, comes to mind as well when we're talking about just mind-expanding stuff. Group 1850. Um... Both their albums are essential, Paradise Now, and their uh, archive release, Mother No Head, I think it's called. Uh, this is Ajimo's Trip to Mother Earth, and it's got the 3D cover. Uh, I would say this is probably my pick over the two. Start with the debut. It's definitely got some early Floyd reminiscent sounds, but uh, very much more uh, sort of tripped out than Floyd, I would say. Um, this one has kind of recently become a five-star album for me. I was, I was kind of debating, well, you know, it's not one I listen to all the time, but every time I do, I'm taken away by it, and I think it deserves to be in the list. This is uh, Cold Sun, Dark Shadows. Sort of a, our, probably the best archival release as far as, uh, you know, first being put on Rockadelic and being discovered by Rich and from an acetate 
this is just incredible. And it even says on the back not to uh, listen to this while driving or using machinery, which is probably true. I mean, this stuff is just like bound to get you tripped out without even taking any substances, you know. And then uh, this is one, probably one of the more obscure ones you never will hear people praise about, except for me. Um, this one, I just, is so damn underrated for me. This is Less Irresistibles, the story of Baxter Williams. You know, people always talk about Odyssey and Oracle and Tommy, SF Sorrow. This is a damn good uh, concept record from uh, Spain. These were actually U.S. US guys that were, uh, I think, in the army or something. Not army, but somehow uh, associated with the military, I believe, and were... Or am I thinking of another group? I might be. Anyways, uh, I might be thinking of someone else. But they only made this one album, and this, the production on this is so insanely brilliant. It just sounds like they put a lot of money into this thing, and it's just forgotten about. It's on the CBS label, and I'm so glad to pick this up. This is a five-star record for me. Uh, Pop Bliss, Baroque Pop, and then it's also got a couple fuzz, nub fuzz numbers on there, which are equally, equally as good. Uh, as far as private press, both garage, it's got a perfect blend of garage and psych. Uh, this is the one I would go to. The Summer Sounds, Up Down. It's basically another uh, album with a theme going on, kind of like a rom having like romantic up and downs uh, over the course of summer is basically how this album flows. Um, it's on Radioactive. It's, it's kind of lucky to get this because uh, it, um, a label such as Radioactive got banned on Discogs before I bought this, so or after I bought this, so happy to get my hands on this before that happened. This is uh, just fantastic. Like I said, it's got kind of like a garage garage flavor going on, but with that added hazy, hazy sort of sounding organ over the mix. Kind of reminds me of the maze in some spots. Uh, this is a favorite of mine. Uh, so when we're talking about Afro rock, you know, Sort of psych records coming from Africa. This is probably one of the top for me. Ofergi, or however you pronounce it. Try and Love. Um, this is fascinating. Sort of like really hypnotic organ going throughout. Um, insanely busted amp. Fuzz guitar on this. And um, it's just brilliant. And the fact these kids were so young when they made this. And uh, production is um, very very above average for you know the fact the fact where it was recorded at um, and then I had to throw you know sort of a Canadian record in the mix as well and this is one that I think we can all agree is just uh, the cream of the crop when it comes to a garage garage site from Canada plastic cloud um, again one I discovered really early on uh, from different reviews on rate your music and stuff like that uh, kind of got me pumped to uh, listen to this and this is one I've listened to several times and uh, still get blown away by uh, their songwriting ability and the fact that it is kind of crudely recorded but you can kind of see where uh, you know they want to shine they want to have a start the you know a shot at stardom and they didn't get it but this is on the allied records label and it's just uh, fascinating work and the more I listen to it, the more the guy sounds like uh, John Lennon in spots in the vocals. Just always kind of a cool thing about that. Just imagining John Lennon singing for a group like that. Um, this one's pretty pretty typical of the era as well. Um, again, another very young band that uh, made this one effort, and it's just a shame they never made it anywhere else. Uh, the Freeborn. They were from the East Coast, part of the Boss Town Sound. I would consider this uh, at least the top five Boss Town psych records for me. Uh, it's kind of got jazz elements going through and strong writing. A little bit of blues here and there, but uh, they're just all over the map. And 
very trippy as well, the title track. Uh, we're, when we're talking about some of the most crunchiest fuzz guitar records out there, I always go to this one if I want to have like just that punch of extra fuzz in my mix, you know. This is Fire, Could You Understand Me, a uh, band from Yugoslavia, and uh, man, I got this early on, um, on an eBay purchase, but um, this is, if you're looking for the, just the most crunchiest fuzz guitar out there, um, this is it, and this is one I return to, and just, you have to crank this one, that's for sure. Um, again, when we're talking about, as far as like San Francisco psych, one of my favorite scenes, you know, and probably the most famous scene uh, from the U.S. is, you know, people probably think of San Francisco, and this is one of the most forgotten groups of that era, and I think they had, they just nailed the sound. Frumius Bandersnatch, you know, people always talk about Jefferson Airplane, Grateful Dead, uh, Quicksilver Messenger Service. I mean, this band is right in there, and of course the fuzz is cranked up again. It's got that perfect uh, vibrato on the uh, fuzz lead, which gives it, you know, because the West Coast sound had that really twangy flavor, and uh, this one just, it's just bliss. It's just, um, just nails that sound perfectly, and it's kind of got, you know, some jam band elements, and it's not it's not like a Grateful Dead though. It's like a it's like a level higher than them, if you ask me. But might be the wrong guy to say that. But um, when we're talking about again another Boss Town record, got to throw this band in the mix. And this is one that I do rank pretty highly. Um, near five star record, Behold and See, uh, by the Ultimate Spinach. And this is an upgraded copy I got at the record show. Um, well, at least I upgraded the cover, I should say. The record wasn't very good, though. Um, there's that one. I think we all know Mind Flowers. Um, as far as, like, Krautrock goes, or German Space Rock, Progressive Rock, whatever you want to call it, uh, this is one that's always been, like, right up there with Silver Bart, um, you know, Amandal 2, you know, Can. And this is Necronomicon. Uh, this is very dark, but um, just a big time favorite of mine that um, I return to quite often. And, uh, you know, kind of sounds like Black Sabbath in spots, but it's also got this kind of cosmic spacey sound to it. And uh, they're probably listening to Deep Purple as well with, uh, you know, Ian Gillian's vocals, because this guy screeches, man. It's, it's a blast. Um, this one I kind of added in last minute, but I think this deserves to be a top five, or not top five, five star record, you know, in this top 30 pile in my collection, I would say, but uh, Trip Through Hell, CA Quintet, you know, just impressive garage rock concept record, really, uh, but they just kind of went tripped out on this one, and, you know, it's kind of a good thing the leader of the band just had those ideas in mind because uh, he made something quite special. Even the uh, cover art alone is just staggering, you know, when you look at it. And it's kind of quite a grower, but um, the concept behind it is, you know, it's a fairly short album, but man, they do enough in this one to uh, keep you wanting more. So uh, this is one that I probably consider like if we're going to rate your music, uh, style rating. This is probably like a 4.5 for me. Not quite five stars, but I love this one so much and I listen to it enough that I just decided to throw it in here. Um, this has got to be in the top five Boss Town records for me as far as uh, psych pop goes. Fluff. Um, man, what an organ player uh, this guy was. Just uh, fantastic. I, he just kind of creates all these different moods. He knows when to crank the organ up in the lead, and um, there's a few fuzz moments, but man, this has just got some impressive uh, chops on here. Um, again, this is kind of one when we're talking about private releases, and it's kind of similar to Justin O'Brien, one that's really impacted me the most in recent years, is uh, Tom Neal's. 
uh, with his album, I Always Catch the Third Second of a Yellow Light. This is the recent reissue on Now Again. Uh, very homemade. You know, when you listen to this sort of thing, I mean, the kid was only 18 when he made this, and he had all his, all his friends help him out make this. Like, um, I don't know if it was a basement, but it's like in a studio. Uh, it's got kind of a low quality mix in it, but man, the ideas he had were just so, uh, were so huge, you know, when you listen to this thing, um, it just blows your mind, you know, because when you think of, uh, Mike Oldfield making tubular bells at 19, it's pretty impressive too, but this is like the same, this is like the same amount of, uh, impressiveness that captured my attention, so... Tom Neal's. Check it out. And then we got, uh, I think, three more. And this is, an, again, another archive release. Truth of Them and Other Tales. So this is the uh, post-Van Morrison Them, after they did their two albums on Tower. Uh, this is basically most of the members, I believe, who went under, under the name Truth. And they relocated in Chicago. And this is two LPs worth, and... Um, again, when we're talking about archival U.S. recordings or sessions, this is like so impressive. It's just, it's a sin that it was never uh, officially released back in its day, you know. Uh, incredible work. Okay, yeah, two more. This is one, again, I decided to throw in last minute, but I think it deserves its place. Um, High Tide Sea Shanties. Probably the heaviest record from 69, or the 60s, for that matter. Maybe. And it even features an electric violin. Um, this is one that blew me away early on. I'm, I used to have the uh, MP3s of this on my old phone back when I was in high school, and uh, it just blew me away every time. I was like, dude, am I the only one that knows about this? And, you know, sure, sure enough, no, but... At the time, it's kind of like you discovered this and you're like, dude, this is, somebody's got to know about this, right? So High Tide, their debut was just a uh, life changer for me. And this is excellent uh, early progressive rock, heavy psych, just blistering stuff. Okay, and then I, I just had to throw a compilation in. I thought it was fair, you know. I kind of got a good mixed bag of material. Um, you can kind of tell all the albums I shared were uh, different styles of psychedelia, you know, mo for the most part. I mean, we had Boss Town, we had San Francisco, uh, Private Press Records, um, you know, you name it. So I had to throw this compilation in. This is a five-star one for me. Chocolate Soup for Diabetics, uh, Volume 1. Um, I don't think it's the first pressing, but an early pressing and this is just a great starter compilation if anyone wants to get into uh, UK psych this is just a perfect perfect way to start out so couldn't recommend this enough uh, you got Tintern Abbey um, the Misunderstood which weren't they a US band I think there's a couple US bands in here like the Nutches uh, but you got Tintern Abbey Apple, um, Dandelion's Chariot, so, I mean, the whole Chocolate Soup series is worth investigating, uh, for people starting into that, that sort of rabbit hole, but, yeah, that is, uh, 30 albums I picked out that I personally rank five stars, and like I said, um, you know, of course there's probably some songs on them I don't like, or something like that, but, Still, this is uh, stuff that I really cherish the most in my collection as far as uh, just music that can always take me away or, you know, if I had to take a crate of records, you know, this might be the stack. So um, there's some that still could fit in my, you know, five star rating, like uh, one that came to mind just now, uh, Neighborhood Children might fit in there down the road, but there might be a 4.5 for me, but still, I... I'm absorbed in the psychedelic scene, so I just love a lot of this stuff anyways. So anyways, I thought I'd share that and I hope you guys kind of got 
reevaluated as far as like what my outlook is and where I've come from and where I've gotten to this point and just hope to keep building on and so yeah so as far as recently I have six records coming in the mail which is probably the most I've ever had ordered you know and uh, well two of them are kind of debatable yet because I had kind of trouble with one through PayPal which I'm kind of worried about because it's a record I really want and then there's one like I told you I think my last video it's a South American uh, psych record that is insanely rare and I can't believe it's coming to this household you know and uh, he hasn't shipped it yet so I'm kind of worried but we shall see um, hope it all works out in the end and uh, if you got any questions let me know what tell me what you think of my top 30 and uh, hope uh, people are gonna search this music out hopefully and kind of what I'm here for you know I like to uh, share share my opinion on stuff and kind of open people's ears up a little more you know and get them to check out new things and um, so yeah it's basically all I got so till then we'll catch you soon